Why does that occur? Well, simply because the heart is beating so quickly that the energy is depleted from the storages and we therefore develop heart failure. Often we have associated problems, for example, ischemia. Or if a patient already has subclinical dysfunction, he might not tolerate a rather high heart rate. There are also theories that calcium channel activity is involved here in this disease process and that oxidative stress might play a role as well. But whatever, usually we'll see patients who have rapid heart rate and atrial fibrillation, sometimes heart rates of about 140 or 150, if they persist over longer periods of time, can lead to left ventricle dysfunction. The good thing is, it's reversible. And if you wait after three or four months, the patient might again revert to completely normal left ventricle function. Here is such an example. You see on the top a patient who has a very high heart rate. Not only that, he also has mitral regurgitation. And then after we converted the patient to sinus rhythm, and after three or four months, we repeated the echocardiogram, and you can now see that left ventricle function is completely normal. So be aware that patients with tachycardia can develop cardiomyopathy, but also be aware that in general, it's very difficult to really assess left ventricle dysfunction in patients who have high heart rates.